Greetings to you all, my formerly incarcerated sisters. A shout out to Andrea James from the National Council of Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls in the US. And a special shout out to Debbie Kilroy from Sisters Inside in Australia. I thank and honor all of you who have come together from all over the world. Let me tell you that I deeply regret that I cannot join you in person in Bogota for the first international convening of formerly incarcerated women. But I promise you that I am not only there virtually through this message, but I am also there in spirit. And so I thank the initiators and sponsors of this important and long overdue forum. The Colombian NGOs De Lucia and Mujeres Libres, the Washington Office on Latin America, the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls, and the Colombian Ministry of Justice. I understand that I am now speaking to more than 50 formerly incarcerated women from some 20 countries around the world who were present at the forum and who have determined together with their constituencies to collectively bring an end to the incarceration of women and girls in the world. This is a mission that requires audacity, perseverance, clarity of intention, and very importantly, an abolitionist rather than reformist approach. This mission embodies the understanding that the goal of abolishing jails and prisons for women is an integral part of the larger abolitionist effort to create a world where racism no longer determines who lives in freedom and who lives behind bars. A world that prioritizes housing, healthcare, and education for all. A world that is no longer structured in accordance with the needs and desires of the wealthy. A world in which racism and carceral approaches to social problems will have become obsolete. I congratulate you all for coming together in Bogota, Colombia, where the new government, under the leadership of President Gustavo Petro and Vice President Francia Marquez Mina, is currently attempting to grapple with the prison crisis that has been ongoing in Colombia over the last decades. For far too long, the problems associated with over-incarceration in the world largely have been represented as problems primarily affecting men. Women's incarceration in most places in the world has been seen as a minor issue since proportionately fewer women and gender non-conforming people than men have comprised and continue to comprise the, imp the imprisoned population. Radical feminists, that is to say anti-racist, anti-capitalist feminists argue that this is a narrow and simplistic logic that does not take into consideration the complex realities that are camouflaged by numbers. There may be many more men in prison than women, but when women are imprisoned, as we well know, not only children, but families, and indeed also entire communities inevitably bear the brunt of their incarceration. Moreover, the charges for which women are most often sent to prison are related to drugs or property. And if they are charges for offenses involving violence, 
It is most often the case that the women in question have tried to respond to and protect themselves from the violence they have suffered at the hands of partners. Instead of trying to address the pressing global problem of gender violence, which is the most widespread form of violence in the world, the very women who are the targets of that violence are rendered scapegoats and are compelled to carry the full burden of global gender violence. Women also carry the burden of the global tendency toward building more places of incarceration, including immigrant detention facilities and juvenile facilities. They are the majority of those who suffer collateral consequences of incarceration while still be while still being counted among those who inhabit the free world. The international network of formerly incarcerated women is in the vanguard of social justice movements precisely because you recognize that given the interconnected economic, political, and social structures that characterize our times, it is incumbent on us to develop strategies of social justice that are also global in scope. You are enlivening the internationalism that has long inspired workers and radical women all over the planet. And more recently, such formations as international LGBTQ movements and international movements to rescue the environment. Because the rising number of jails and prisons for women reveals the reveals deep connections with global capitalism and with the flows of human beings across national borders who are looking to escape the poverty that is generated and intensified by capitalism. It is especially important for us to create international strategies to challenge the continuing rise of jails and prisons for women and to challenge the structural racism linked to this process. As a formerly incarcerated woman myself, I express deep solidarity with you and much gratitude to all of you who are determined to end the incarceration of women and girls in the world and indeed to abolish carceral institutions that not only produce and reproduce so much racism, heteropatriarchy, repression, and suffering, but prevent us from discovering creative abolitionist methods of radically restructuring our societies so that they no longer have to turn to violence and repression and racism and heteropatriarchy. You are in the vanguard of the global effort to rebuild our world on new foundations that emphasize happiness, health, and true security for all. I wish you much success in your deliberations.